I need your help. I'm launching some new coffee shops and I need help designing the networks. I need a subnetting expert. That's you, right? If you watched episodes one through six of our series, you no longer suck at subnetting, right? Actually, this might be kind of a test for you because this is real world. And honestly, I'm not sure if you can do it. Reverse psychology, I think you can do it but not really. But here's the scenario right now. I have this network, 10.1.1.0 slash 24. We need to break this up and subnet it to cover these three coffee shops. But here's the kicker. I'm not just saying, give me three networks out of the subnet. No, I need you to subnet based on how many hosts we have in each network. This is different, a bit real world. Let's see if you can do it. Now here's what we need. Each coffee shop has five employees, one server, two Raspberry Pis, because it's a network check coffee shop. What do you expect? Two wireless access points, or WAPs, and up to 20 guests. And if we do the math, so we got about 30 hosts. Now let's give it some wiggle room, say about 40 hosts. So 40 hosts or 40 IP addresses per coffee shop. So go ahead, do it. See if you can do it. Pause the video. Unpause. So 40 hosts or IP addresses per coffee shop. How do you do that? Because it is a bit different, right? In the previous episode, we did it based on how many networks we need. This is kind of flipping it upside down. So if you're like, uh, Chuck, I'm not sure, it's okay. We're gonna walk through it. Get your coffee ready. Fuel up and let's do this. Now the good news is that whether you're submitting based on host or network requirements, is pretty much the same, with one pretty big difference. But you'll see, it's not that hard, especially when we use our good friend, Nosferatu, and his amazing chart. Nosferatu, help us out, give us our chart. Now, subnetting, as you may recall, is all about the subnet mask. Right now, our subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 in dotted decimal notation. It's this mask that we're going to mess with, manipulate, or subnet it to make our new networks. But before we can do that, we do need Nosferatu. We gotta convert this thing into binary. Let's do that now. Nosferatu, help us out. And this right here is our subnet mask in binary. So now that we have our subnet mask in the matrix code that computers love, we can now get our steps to subnet based on host requirements. Now, this might look familiar because it's almost identical to subnetting based on network requirements with one key change, and I haven't changed it yet. I'll show you in a second. But the first thing is we want to use our Nosfera 2. What is that? Oh, well, of course you forgot about Nosferatu's brother, Nosferatu. Nosferatu, give us our chart, man. Help us out. Nosferatu's chart is exactly like Nosferatu's chart, except it's double. Each number is times two. Simple, but powerful. Watch what he can help with. He's gonna help us figure out how many host bits we need to hack. Host bits being the zeros in our subnet mask, whereas the ones are our network bits. Network bits tell you about the network, host bits tell you about the host. How big and how many, essentially. All right, Nosferatu, help us out. We need 40 hosts or IP addresses on each network. The number's 40. Let's take that down to our Nosferatu chart and find a number that can contain 40 addresses. 32? No, not enough. That's smaller than 40. But 64? Hey, that's gonna work. And that's where we are on the Nosferatu chart. Here's how we find out how many host bits we have to hack. Starting from the right, we're gonna see how many host bits it took us to get to 64. Keeping in mind that each one of these numbers here represents a bit. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. It took us six bits on the Nosferatu 2 chart. And that's exactly how many host bits we're gonna have to hack. Now for step two, we're going to hack the host bits, but this is where it's different. This time we're going to the upside down. We're gonna flip things over. You see from our previous episode, if we wanted to subnet based on network requirements, we would try to hack the host bits starting from the left and start taking them out. One, two, three, four, five, six. But not with subnetting based on host requirements. We're gonna flip reverse it. Uno reverse card. We're gonna start from the right and we're gonna go this way or depending on the camera angle, this way, I never know. <laughs> Probably this way, right? Yeah. Now because we're in the upside down, we're not actually going to hack the bits. Scratch that. We're going to save the bits. Host bits. This is from you. Or reserve them. So starting from right to left, here's what I'm talking about. We're gonna say, okay, one, two, three, four, five, Six. We need those six host bits. We're saving them. Don't touch them. Leave them alone. <laughs> and then anything else, we're gonna go ahead and let them get hacked. We reserved our six. That's all we had room for. That's all our boat could carry. We're gonna hack the rest. The rest of the host bits are now on the other team. They're now in network bits. Now really, that's the only difference between network and host requirements is that second step, the upside down. Next, we'll find our increment, which you may recall from the previous episode, will be the last network bit we have. So actually, let me draw this new mask out because it's a bit messy. 
So here it is nice and clean. And the last network bit will be our increment according to the Nosferatu chart. So let's actually put him on the Nosferatu chart real quick. Let's lay him out. So one, one, zero, 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 zero. That last network bit right here represents 64. And 64, <laughs> I don't know why I made that noise. Editor, can you replace that with something else? Thanks. 64 is our increment. And if you recall, it's that number we'll use to create our networks. It's how big they are. And you also may recall that it kind of matches up with our Nosferatu chart when we're figuring out how many host bits we have to hack. Probably gonna match every time. But I don't want you to get lost. Just follow these four steps until you become extremely comfortable with it. Then you can start to hack your own process. But always refer back to this if you get a little lost or if you wanna make sure it's actually like really right. Now hold up, let's take a quick coffee break. Subnetting is kind of hard. We need more coffee, quick sip. Now this coffee break is sponsored by IP Royal. And what they do is pretty cool. So we all have IP addresses, right? Like you have one right now on the internet because you're watching me. But here's the problem. You only have one IP address, only one. But for most things, it's not a big deal. For example, watching a video. But if you want to do some cool things like, I don't know, web scraping, using code to automatically check sites like Amazon, Best Buy or whatever, trying to find the new video cards that are coming out, 4090 or a PS5 or whatever. Actually, you may be watching this if there's a PS6 out. Future. I'm jealous. Actually, I probably already have one because I'm using IP Royal. See, IP Royal is a proxy. And they're super useful for things like web scraping. So when you're trying to constantly ping Amazon, scrape their websites and see what content is there all the time to see if there's something available in stock. Or if you're trying to scrape Twitter or TikTok, trying to get information, get data, whether you're a person or a company, or maybe you're a hacker and you're trying to get information, OSINT or whatever. A lot of these processes are automated. They happen a lot. And because of that, your one IP address you have, you end up getting blocked. That's where a proxy comes in like IP Royal. IP Royal, you can send your stuff through their proxies and they anonymize you and give you a different public IP address. Now proxies are amazing because they do also anonymize you, keep companies from tracking you and all that stuff. They have those benefits. But I know for a lot of you, you're trying to script some cool things. Maybe you're using Scapey, a Python library, to scrape different sites. You can be blocked, your IP can be banned. So using a proxy service like IP Royal will prevent that from happening and you can keep switching IP addresses. One gets blocked, try another one. Maybe go through a few of them. And again, getting back to the hacking example, I made a video on something called proxy chains, which is how hackers, ethical hackers, it's the only type I allow on my channel. If you're the other kind, just go. Don't call me. Don't come by my house. We're done. It's what allows hackers to stay anonymous by going through a proxy. And sure, there are some free ones out there, but are they even up? Are they fast? Are they tracking you? You don't know. So if you want to do some cool stuff, hacking, scraping, whatever, or if you just want to stay anonymous, check out IP Royal. And if you use my code, what's the code again? Oh, Chuck. It's just Chuck. Easy for me to remember. Um, use the code Chuck and you'll get a 30% discount on their residential proxies. And make sure you use it before the deal expires. I'm not sure when it expires, they didn't tell me. So just like use it soon. And yeah, that was our coffee break. Thanks to IP Royal, let's get back to it. So we got our increment, let's create our networks. We're starting with 10.1.1.0. Our increment is 64. So it's gonna go to 10.1.1.63, remember? Because it's including zero. And that right there is our subnet for the first coffee shop. We needed 40 hosts, 40 IP addresses. And 64 pretty much covers that, right? Keeping in mind the network address, the first address in the network, and the broadcast address, the last address in the network are reserved. So we have 62 available addresses. Let's create the rest. All we need are three. Picking up where we uh, left off, it'll be 64 through 127, right? Two down, one to go. 10.1. The 128 through 191. And right there are our three networks. But hold up, what's the subnet mask? Now, if we look back at our work from earlier, we've got that sucker sitting in binary, but what is it in decimal? Let's real quick convert this sucker into decimal format. Because we're done talking to computers, now we gotta talk to humans. Now, just from practice, we know that all ones will equal 255. So we know the first three octets are 255, 255, 255. 255. It's the fourth one we have to figure out, which is pretty easy. No sprock two, help us out. The first two bits are on, the rest are off. And all we have to do is add the bits that are on together. So 128 plus 64, what's that give us? Calculator help, that's 192, right? It is indeed 192. And that's the dotted decimal notation. So our new mask and decimal would look just like this. But what about side our notation? That slash number we get, like up here, we have slash 24. That's actually not too bad. All you gotta do is count the number of network bits. That simple. Here we have eight, 16, 24, and we count the extras, 25, 26. 
So we have a slash 26 network. So if I were to hand these networks out to my coffee shops, saying, hey, network admin at the coffee shop. Yes, it's a network shop coffee. Every single coffee shop has their own network admin. Do we need it? Yes. Lost my train of thought just going through that. Here are the three networks. 10.1.1.0 slash 26, 10.1.1.64 slash 26, and 10.1.1 dot 128 slash 26. Now what you just did there was real world. You helped me subnet and address my coffee shop networks. And this is what you'll probably see more commonly when you're given a, a problem to solve when it comes to subnetting. Now at this point, you do have the process down. And again, it wasn't really different from subnetting based on network requirements. Just a slight little change, going to the upside down. But now you have that skill and let's test it. I have one more example for you. I'm gonna let you do this yourself. Try it out. Now I built a network here inside Boson NetSim, which Boson has the best network simulator out there. If you wanna get your CCNA, CCMP or whatever. And they are the official sponsor of the CCNA series. They're amazing. So I built this network inside NetSim, which is web-based now. It's amazing. You can do it anywhere from anywhere. So here's the scenario. You're an ISP or internet service provider. You have five customers who need at least 20 static IPs, public IPs. Here's your network, 142.2.0.0 slash 16. Now you're an ISP. Don't go crazy. Don't give them too many addresses. The idea here is conserve. Now go ahead, cut it up. Pause the video. Unpause. Let's see how you did. Now, even though this is a class B address, it'll be easy. As long as we have our friends Nosferatu and Nosferatu, it's gonna be cheese. Let's do it. Slash 16 going from cider to decimal will look like this. And with a little help from Nosferatu, this is how it looks in binary. Whoo, that's a lot of host bits. Speaking of host bits, let's figure out how many we have to hack. Step one, we need at least 20 IP addresses, 20 hosts. So looking at our Nosferatu chart, which of these numbers can contain 20 addresses? Well, it can be 16, but hey, 32 is looking pretty good. It's gonna be 32. How many bits did it take us to get to 32? One, two, three, four, five. We'll have to hack five host bits. But hold up, upside down. We're not hacking them, we're gonna reserve them. Uno reverse card. Starting from right, going left, we're gonna save our bits. We need one, two, three, four, five host bits. Those are ours, we're saving them. Network, you can have the rest, we don't even want them. And the network, it's hungry, man. It wants all of them. It's gonna hack them all. Notice we still are hacking host bits. We just care about who gets hacked. And if we clean that up a bit, this is our new subnet mask in binary. All right, we hacked the host bits. Now let's find our increment. Increment is the last network bit we have. It's this guy right here. And if we throw that octet on the Nosferatu chart, we can see that our increment is 32. And again, kind of a callback to our Nosferatu chart. So now let's create our networks. The first one will be 142.2.0.0 .0 .0 through 142. Dot two, dot zero, dot 31. And I'm pretty sure you can do the rest. It's just counting at the end of the day. So go ahead. And there's our networks. Now again, we forgot to convert the binary subnet mask into decimal. Let's do that real quick. We know all ones will be 255. The fourth octet is weird, so we'll look at him. Put him on the nose for all two chart. All the bits that are turned on, we'll add together. So 128 plus 64 plus 32 which with a little math gives us 224. And then insider, that's pretty easy too. We got eight, 16, 24, 25, 26, 27. We got a slash 27. And here's the final diagram. Each network will have how many addresses? 32, giving them 30 usable addresses, well within the range of them needing 20. And it gives us room for growth. We have a lot more networks we can make. We could add a lot more customers. Now, if you got this right first try, that's amazing. And if you didn't, that's okay. Subnetting is a skill that you need to practice over and over and over to get pretty good at it. And if you're like me, you forget every year or so and you have to come back and relearn it. And by the way, you do need the practice. And I've got some for you. Check the link below and sign up for my academy, the Network Chuck Academy, and I've got tons of extra practice for you. Now, let me give you a peek into our next episode. And let's see if you can even do this. You may not have to watch the next episode and that's fine, but I think you might because you're pretty awesome at subnetting. Like you don't suck anymore, but this one will make you feel like it. Boson has a pretty great question and they're XM Max, which is also all web-based now, which I stink and love, it's amazing. Look at this question here. Given a host IP address of 48.25.24.71, one slash 21, what is the broadcast address for the sub network? Now this is weird because you kind of get in everything, but you have to almost reverse engineer it, right? Do you know the answer? Can you figure this out? If you can't, I'll see you in the next episode, which by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, it may not be out yet, but it is already out on the Network Shock Academy. Again, link below.